So I'm filling in for Kevin, who is traveling. So tonight, uh, Dave Ackman uh, presenting uh, clinic on building billboards. He's presented this clinic at the Gateway Division of the MRA in June, July of 2019. Also at TrainFest 2019, Gateway X 2020, and on and on and on. I think he's given it to every people, everybody that would listen, huh? <laughs> Quite a few. Yep. And then the clinic, he's going to describe how to get billboard images and how to build the support structures. So I'm going to make you the host so you can share. Okay. And you got it, Dave. I am the host it, now, so I'm going to share my screen. You, you may notice if somebody pops up there, I may not be able to let them in. You may have to let them in the meeting. Okay? Well, I'd be glad to do that. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. And hopefully y'all can see that now. We doing okay? Yes. Okay, okay good, great, great. I'm gonna admit uh, uh, Terrell and we got that taken care of there. All right, and as Byron said, uh, we're gonna talk about building billboards for my railroad, the Baden, Vote and Dismet. And uh, what are we gonna talk about? Well, we're gonna talk about how you get the artwork for these buildings. And uh, probably one of the things that uh, I'm, I'm gonna talk about is how to build assembly fixtures. And I am really gonna harp on, on standardizing sizes because it's kind of like eating potato chips building billboards. You can't stop at one. And if you standardize on the sizes, the creation of the support structures gets a lot easier because it's a little bit tedious building these things. And so I, I made assembly fixtures for standard sizes and you're gonna see about that. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how uh, 3D printing applies to uh, uh, this type of work, building uh, the support structures. I started on doing these uh, all using styrene, and that's the main part of what we're going to talk about, but also uh, about how you can build support structures with 3D printing. But I'm going to stop the share right now and tell you about the most important thing that you're going to learn uh, tonight, and that's my website. If you go to daackm .github, G -I -T -H -U -B io you can find everything that I've ever done, all my clinics, including the one on billboards. So if we wanted to, we could scroll down. This is an upcoming billboard or upcoming clinic on some 3D printing stuff. And we get to the bottom and here's this clinic on building billboards. And there's a handout. Uh, there's, uh, if you want to share this with you know Kevin when he gets back, well, this is a, a trailer, a video where in 90 seconds you can see the, the entire clinic. Uh, and, and here's the complete presentation and, uh, and a little bit more about building uh, the, the fixtures out of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. And so that uh, the website is a treasure trove of everything I've ever done, including uh, the details on, on building billboards. So I'm going to stop that share again and go back to sharing my main clinic. And it should be visible again. I'm going to make it to screen just a little bigger here. <clears throat> All right, and I'm going to start this thing rolling, but from time to time, I'm going to interrupt myself. We'll take some questions, and uh, I'll give you a little bit more live commentary as we go. So let's roll tape. Hello, I am Dave Ackman, and I want to welcome you to this series of videos on the creation of billboards and posters for model railroads. My railroad is the Baden, Vote, and Dismet the names of the elementary schools I attended back in the 1950s. Like many railroads, I have a small carnival, but one day I decided the circus should come to town. I wanted circus billboards. I went looking for them on the web, but found nothing that met my needs. But I did find many circus images, just not billboards, so I decided to make them myself. 
One thing led to another, and I created over a hundred billboards for various products and industries that I remember while growing up. Now my goal is to share with you the techniques I have uncovered to create unique billboards which complement the industries on your layout and the products they produce. To meet this goal, I will demonstrate how to search for, organize, and save vintage billboards and poster images. How to size and print decals for billboards you have saved. How to build supporting structures to display your decals and how to build fixtures to help build the structures. In order to complete your billboards, you will need access to several items. A personal computer running Microsoft Windows and a high-speed internet connection. An inkjet printer. I use a Canon MG2520 available for about $75. Decal paper. I use white water slide decal transfer paper at about $18 per 20 sheets. A Styrene Chopper 3 from Northwest Short Lines, about $42 or its equivalent. Digital or dial calipers, a height gauge like a Wixie WR200 or equivalent. Brass setup gauge blocks, a ruler in HO scale, and various pieces of evergreen styrene. A plank of 48 inch 3 quarter inch ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Pieces of brass rod, MDF, Corian, or other dimensionally stable material. And 3 by 5 index cards. Throughout these tutorials, we will provide dimensions for creating billboards for images between 8 and 16 feet tall in HO scale. However, the techniques are applicable to larger and smaller scales. First, I decided to visit. I once made a billboard in F scale, which is like 20 to 1. Uh, N scale gets a little tricky, but uh, you know the, the, the standard, the S's and the HO's, it's, it's pretty easy. Visit the Walters website and search for ready-made billboards. And I found over 70 options in HO. But of these, over 50 were from Tishy, and I felt they were rather plain and none featured a circus. Walters themselves offered some pre-made support structures that matched the artwork appearing in their annual catalog, and although I did like them, there was little variety in the artwork, and there was no way to have billboards at any dimension other than the one they offered. I then searched YouTube and found one good site that showed how to construct custom billboards from Styrene, and I liked his approach. You can find it yourself if you search for Luke Towen Billboard. But finally, I decided that if I was to get my circus billboards, I would have to build them from scratch. But where could I find the circus billboard artwork that I remembered? As a retired computer scientist, I decided to do a search on the internet. I typically use Firefox as a browser and Yahoo for searches. I did a search on Vintage Images Circus and I hit the mother load. At the very top was a link to a site featuring circus images, so I clicked on it. I scrolled to the top and saw the first of many, many images, one of which was enlarged. The enlarged image was not particularly useful to me, but then I started paging downward. Quickly I found an image that met my needs, so I clicked on it. An enlargement appeared, which also gave the dimensions of the image in pixels. I decided to save the image to my hard drive. I right-clicked on the image and a menu popped up. One of the options was to save image as. I clicked on this option and a file save window opened. I decided to create a folder for all my future circus images, so I clicked on the New Folder button in the upper left, navigated to a place I liked, named the folder Circus, then double-clicked on it to open it. I then gave the image a name and clicked on Save. This completed the capture of the image on my hard drive to use as I desired. I continued scrolling down 
until I reached the end of the page where a show more images button appeared. I clicked on it and more and more images appeared. When I found something new I liked, I right clicked on it and saved it. This continued until I had enough. I ended up with 35 images suitable for billboards or posters. I was very pleased. But this was just the beginning. I realized that I could combine vintage images with any broad topic for which I wanted a billboard. Cars, soft drinks, groceries, tobacco, anything that stirred my mind could be memorialized into a billboard. I subsequently searched vintage billboard instead of vintage images and found even more. The fun never ends. This one right here, Hendel's, is, uh, used to be an IGA market in our town 50 years ago. And I designed that one in PowerPoint. So even if you couldn't find an image you like, there's nothing to stop you from designing your own. Before we go any further, let's consider how tall the artwork for a billboard should be. I thought there might be some industry standards for billboard artwork, but in searching, I found none. So for my railroad, I decided that I would standardize on artwork height of 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 scale feet. After a bit of experience, I found myself rarely using the larger sizes, generally using the 8 foot size and occasionally the 10 foot height. 8 feet translates into 96 inches. And in HO scale, after we divide 96 by the HO scale factor of 87.1, we find that artwork 8 feet tall translates into 1.09 actual inches, which I often round to 1.10 inches. A 10 foot piece of billboard art would translate into 120 inches and when divided by the scale factor of 87.1 results in 1.38 actual inches and so on. Standardizing on one or two sizes of artwork for your railroad will make creating support structures easier and I strongly suggest you limit the size of your billboard projects as well. When you find an image you like, take a look at its size. This calliope is 1200 pixels wide and 973 pixels tall. By default, this image will print at 300 pixels per inch, resulting in a default image size of 4 inches wide and 3.24 inches tall, much too large for an HO scale billboard. No matter, we can scale it down in PowerPoint, and even if we scale it down by a factor of three to fit an eight-foot billboard, the image will still look fine. But what if the image was smaller, say only 100 pixels tall? Such an image would need to be enlarged to fit our needs, and enlargements generally appear pixelated or choppy, and we should avoid such images. Generally, you need about 100 pixels per inch to get a good piece of billboard art. So an image for an 8-foot billboard needs to be at least 110 pixels tall before reduction, a 10-foot piece of art at least 140 pixels, and so on. I did discover that some of the images were copyrighted but I believe that if used on my personal railroad for educational purposes, then the fair use doctrine of copyright law allows me to use them. Also, as the use is very limited, I believe the de minimis doctrine in which the law does not concern itself with trifles applies. I certainly would not sell any images I captured but I believe that I am free to use them on my model train layout. If you have further concern, of course, consult your own counsel. Other images have watermarks imposed on them to protect them from unpaid use, and I tend to avoid them. Here you can see watermarks on a circus image and what it can look like if you have the skills to edit a photo. I just had to have this one. But the image on the web was uh, by a company called Almay, 
A-L-A-M-Y. And the, the image here on the left had the, that superimposed right on top of the, of the elephant. And down here was a, a little bit of it as well. And the image you know, had this chop on it. Well, I did some pixel editing and you know you can make it look pretty good, uh, but like I'm about to say, it's a lot of work. Some other thoughts. You know I encourage the use of folders to hold similar images. If you would like some free software to print all the images in a folder, complete with their file names, I would recommend Image Viewer from http colon slash slash www.faststone.org. It has a nice way of putting multiple images on a single page in a thumbnail format and is quite useful. Also, while I used Firefox and Yahoo, other browsers and search engines will also work. I tested Microsoft Edge and the Google search engine and they worked as well. Your choice. Now that it's just really convenient to be able to right click on an image and then save it to your hard drive. That's really all that's involved with uh, finding images, knowing how to search, you know, put whatever you want, like uh, oh, car ads or, you know, and the images in and you can get a lot of, uh, a lot of artwork, but you got to size it and get it to the right size before you make your decals. We have our images. How do we turn them into decals? Making decals is easy if you have a good inkjet printer. All you need is special decal paper and some software to scale the images. First, the paper. Decal paper is available at some hobby shops and online. I prefer to buy my decal paper from Amazon as it is less expensive, less than a dollar per A4 size sheet, and is delivered directly to my door. Search Amazon for water slide decal transfer paper white and it should pop right up. I like the brand from Rolurius. Their sample image is the one with the purple background. Rolurius also makes a clear decal transfer paper but get the one with the white background. That's why we put white in our search bar. Clear transfer paper might be our choice for numbering rolling stock, but not for posters and billboards. If you have PowerPoint on your PC, you can use it to import size and print your images. If not, consider downloading LibreOffice at www.libreoffice.org. LibreOffice includes a useful presentation program similar to PowerPoint. Click the download button to download the software and save the MSI file. Then double click on the downloaded file and follow the installation instructions. Whether you use PowerPoint or LibreOffice, the tasks we need to make the images printer ready are the same, importing and sizing. I will show how to use both tools. Now, on to importing and scaling with PowerPoint. Our goal is to download and size about a dozen images on a single page. We do so because decal paper is not inexpensive, so we might as well get as much out of a sheet as we can. To import our accumulated images, we open a new blank presentation, then click on the border around the Click to Add title box, and then click on the keyboard's delete key to remove it. Similarly, we click on the click to add subtitle boxes border and then hit the delete <coughs> key to remove it. Now, to import an image, we click on the insert tab and then on the picture icon. A menu window opens and we scroll to select the folder where we placed our images. We then select an image of interest and then the insert button. The image will appear within PowerPoint. To resize the image, we right click on the image and then select size and position. Next, we make sure that the lock aspect ratio box is checked. We enter in the desired height. 
I hope that you do remember that an 8 foot tall billboard translates into 1.10 scale inches and so forth. And then click on the close button. We repeat this process to add more images until our page is full. This would be a good billboard, but good or a good poster. Billboards are normally in landscape mode. They're horizontal. If you do not have PowerPoint, LibreOffice, as described earlier, can do the same task for free. Start LibreOffice and click on the Impress Presentation button on the left. The Select a Template window will open, and since we do not want a template, we cancel the window. Now on the right side in the properties column, please make sure that the slide format is A4, which is the size of the decal film, and select the first available layout, the blank one in the upper left of the available layouts. To insert our images, we click on the insert menu item and then on image. Just like in PowerPoint, a menu window opens and we scroll to select the folder where we placed our images. We then select an image of interest and then click on the open button, a slight difference from PowerPoint where this button is labeled insert. Now right click on the image and select position and size. We make sure that the keep ratio box is checked, enter in the desired height and then the OK button. <coughs> we repeat this process to add more images until our page is full. Printing the decal is easy. Just place your decal paper properly in your printer and do a file print. When the page completes printing, be careful to avoid touching the printed area and allow the ink to dry overnight. Not one hour, not two hours, not four hours, overnight. Once the page is dry, remember that inkjet printers use water soluble ink. And if we tried to use the decals without water protection, we would not be pleased. To correct the issue, go to your automotive paint store and buy a rattle can of clear spray lacquer and coat the image. Yeah, I use acrylic. Uh, I, I shouldn't have said lacquer in there, but acrylic's a little uh, better behaved than lacquer. So I, I use this, uh, this stuff from my auto paint store. My decal paper says to coat the images within 24 hours of printing, but be sure to read and follow the manufacturer's directions, both for the decal paper and the lacquer. I generally give the decals a second coat of lacquer and allow 24 hours for final drying. If you feel uncomfortable making decals, it is perfectly acceptable to print on cardstock paper which is about as thick as an index card, and apply the card to the support structure with rubber cement. It may not be as bright or glossy, but it can work. Making the Okay, I'm going to take a little break right now uh, before we get into the support structures. Uh, if anybody would like, you can unmute and ask a question, and uh, when we're done with that, we'll, we'll head on to the next part. Anybody got a question? So you said that doing in scale was difficult or more difficult. Do you have the sizes to make in scale billboards for the ratio? Well, uh, yeah, I'd probably take uh, the, the ratios that you've got right here, or if you go to my website that they're in the, the handout as well. And I would take my sizes and multiply them by whatever 87 over 160 is 
and that's the relative ratio of, of HO to N. Okay. Now, what makes it hard? Well, you can do the scaling, but uh, the resolution on, on some of the printers uh, gets a little dicey as you make them you know, only half as tall and half as, as wide, roughly, between H, O, and N. So yeah, it can be done. Making these leg sets, uh, you know, I'm 73. Uh, things aren't as easy to manipulate as they once were. So if you're working in N scales, no, well, you know all about that in N scale if you're if you're an N scale guy. Right. So yeah, it can be done, uh, but it's uh, it's a little harder to do. Okay, thank okay. you. Now, one thing that I am going to do, I'll, I'll tell you right now, at the end, I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. Uh, you're about to see some assembly fixtures that I've created that makes this a lot easier but they're for HO. So if you wanted to make assembly fixtures, uh, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about how to do that, uh, but but I'm an HO guy, but it can be done. Anybody hey, else? Paul Vaughn here. Yeah, Paul. Have you used a wireless laser printer? Uh, I I used to have a, a laser printer. It was an old Tektronix Warhorse. No, this and, is a laser color printer. Yeah, I, I had a laser color printer. And, and it worked, but I think that the, uh, the colors were more vibrant on an inkjet. I've had both, and, um, and then they're, they're cheaper now, especially when you get into the eco tank things where you fill up the, uh, you don't use cartridges anymore, you just fill up the tanks from bottles. So, you know, I'm, if you're happy with a color printer, you can do it on a laser. Uh, I just had both of them, and I decided that. For me, I was going to go for an inkjet. And that's, you know, that's for a while. That was the only thing I used my inkjet for was making these decals. So but if, you're, if you're happy with the print, you can get the, the, uh, the paper that will work for lasers. You can do it. Ron? Thank you. No, that was, that was my question was, uh, I've got uh, color laser printers also, but is there a different paper, uh, decal paper? But obviously, you just answered that. Yes, there is. Some say that it'll work with both, but most that I see say that it's for one or the other. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, let's get going on how to make these support structures. Support structure for billboards involves building three assemblies, the face and frame, the legs, and the boardwalk. Making the decals was pretty easy, but this part is a bit harder, so be patient. Let's start with the face and frame. I like to put a frame around every piece of billboard art. To make a face frame, cut out the decal you wish to use. Also, cut two pieces of evergreen 8210 about four inches long. Lay the decal on a cutting surface with the two pieces of 8210 on the top. This is the height of the face frame you need to hold both the decal and the frame. I like to use uh, Evergreen Styrene. They're, they're good folks and part 8210 is a 2x10 in HO. Uh, I made myself actually a cutting board out of Corian. This is, you know, countertop material. And uh, I ha happened to find a place that had a whole bunch of, you know, scrap. So I took one and I made a right angle fixture for making, uh, for cutting my decals. I also took a piece here. and This is the absolute best size. It's a straight edge for a 12 foot high billboard. So I just slam it up there and I run my exacto knife down the side and, you know, I don't have to do much measuring anymore. Uh, but, you know, you can do it with a, just a regular straight edge and uh, an exacto knife. Lay a straight edge on the top and scribe a straight line or a half a dozen lines across a piece of evergreen 9040 and snap it off. Similarly, place the two pieces of evergreen 8210 on the side of the decal. We'll put, we're placing these two pieces here because we're going to put a frame around this decal. So this is as wide as the left side of the frame. This is as wide of the right side of the frame. So it's a convenient way to, to cut something that you're going to put a frame around. Just use these as, as spacers. 
This marks the length of Evergreen 9040 needed to contain the decal and the frame. Using a straight edge, scribe a line and snap it off. You could use Evergreen 9030 and even 9020, which are progressively thinner and less expensive. But I appreciate the additional heft and I'm willing to pay the price. Your decision. Now it is time to build the frame and we will use a chopper razor blade type cutter or equivalent and some more Evergreen number 8210 strips to cut out our parts. Since we just cut the face, I recommend that we place the top of the face frame in the chopper and bring up a stop to set the size of the cut. I cut pieces of brass to serve as stops for right angle cuts, as they are smaller than the triangular stops from Northwest Short Line and easier to use. Cut two pieces to become the top and bottom of the frame, and three more to be used eventually for the boardwalk. While you are at it, cut four pieces of Evergreen 8206 for eventual use as back stiff stiffeners. They're essentially a 2 by 6 I put on the back of the frame. Just makes it a little prettier. Thinners. Similarly, rotate the face and cut two pieces of 8210 to frame the left and right sides. Set aside three pieces of 8210 and all four pieces of 8206. Now, miter the remaining four pieces of 8210 at 45 degrees, being careful not to snip off too much of the length. Glue the left frame piece to the face then the top and bottom, and finally the right frame piece. Test fit the decal into the frame and trim if needed. I usually use Plastruct Plastic Weld or Plastruct Bondine glue, but other fast drying brush applied glues will work. Plastic Weld has a bit more working time and totally cures in 24 hours, and Bondine sets up faster and cures faster. You don't need to be ultra careful with the gluing as painting will cover a lot of sins. Now flip the face frame assembly face down and let's glue some stiffeners to the back for visual interest. In the previous step we cut four pieces of Evergreen 8206 but something larger or smaller could be substituted. I space them evenly parallel to the long side of the frame. Now let's go to the boardwalk. Earlier we cut three pieces of Evergreen 8210 for this purpose. I use a small fixture to line the three pieces parallel, apply some masking tape over all three of them, and then use the tape to remove the strips from the fixture. Every inch or so I glue some Evergreen 8104 crosswise to brace the main pieces. I then remove the tape and allow the assembly to dry. Once dry, I nip off any excess length of the cross braces. Finally, we need to create several supports to hold the frame and boardwalk. Our supports will have four parts, a vertical leg, a slanted leg, a cross member, and a diagonal support, all constructed from Evergreen 164. Here you may want to diverge from my suggestions. Evergreen 164 is approximately 8 by 8 inches in HO scale, and you may feel that such a piece is a bit larger than prototypical. The billboard frames from Walther's are indeed a bit thinner. But for my eye and fat fingers, 164 is more pleasing and easier to work with. Again, your decision. And if you worked in N, you probably wouldn't want to use 164, Evergreen 164, because this is about 3 30 seconds of an inch. You know, now you're talking about 3 uh, and that's harder to work with. And uh, there may be better ways, which you'll see in a little bit. If you end up wanting to make a lot of signs, you may want to order Evergreen 164 in bulk as part number 6164 directly from the manufacturer at http colon slash slash evergreenscalemodels.com. They're good folks. To assemble the supports, I created a leg assembly fixture out of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or UHMW for short. UHMW is a very slippery plastic and little sticks to it well.
thus making it ideal for an assembly fixture since our glue or glued parts won't stick easily. Yes, you could make an assembly fixture from some other material, but UHMW is ideal, easily obtainable, and well worth it. I will describe how to make this fixture in the final part of this tutorial, but for now, note that I will be using one fixture to glue the vertical and slanted legs at a 30 degree angle, and will then glue the legs to the cross members at a 90 degree angle to the vertical leg, rendering it a horizontal support for the boardwalk. Finally, I will glue the diagonal supports at 60 degrees. Why 30 and 60 degrees? because I can cut these angles easily on the chopper and they look good. Walther's uses these angles for their billboards, so if it is good enough for them, it is good enough for me. So now it is time to cut the legs, but how long? This depends on the height of your artwork and how tall you wish the billboard to be above the ground. Let's assume that the artwork we are using is eight foot tall. I like to add a frame around the artwork, so that adds another foot above and below the artwork. We are assuming that the legs are 8 foot long, and we also want a toe gap between the face frame and the boardwalk. Adding it all up, it comes to 19 feet for the length of the billboard's front legs. Let's convert 19 feet into inches, and we get 228. Dividing 228, by the HO scale factor of 87.1, that tells us that our front legs should be 2.62 inches long. If you want to use a different height of artwork, or taller or shorter legs, change the numbers and do the math. How many leg sets? I tend to take the width of the face frame assembly, round it up to the next higher whole number, and cut that many leg sets. Thus, if the face frame assembly is between 3 and 4 inches, I use 4 leg sets. If it is between 2 and 3, I use 3 sets. But how long should the diagonal leg be? And you thought you would never use your high school trigonometry. The ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse of a 30 degree angle of a 30-60-90 triangle <coughs> is the cosine of 30 degrees or 0 0.866. Thus, the diagonal for the support will be the length of the vertical leg divided by 0 0.866 or 3.02 inches. If you decide to make your legs shorter or longer, alter them accordingly. Now that we know how long the leg should be, we can cut some styrene, right? Not so fast. If you think you might ever want to create another billboard to these dimensions, stop and make a gauge block. What is a gauge block? It is a piece of dimensionally stable material, such as brass, UHMW, or Corian, cut to the exact length of the desired part. The gauge block is then used to set the distance of a chopper's blade to its stop block. You never again have to try to measure the distance to place the stop block from the blade. You just place the gauge block on the chopper, slide the stop block over, and forget about it. So rough cut a piece of material, I use 3 millimeter square brass rod, a bit over length, and gently file or sand off the end until it is the proper length. Make a gauge block for both the vertical leg the sloped leg, the cross member, and the diagonal support. If you plan on making more billboards than just one size, make a set of gauge blocks for each size. Yes, it's work. Just do it. You can thank me later. Now, using the gauge block, cut the vertical leg to size. Using the sloped gauge block, cut a sloped leg to about one quarter inch oversize miter one end, and then cut the other end to size with a 90 degree cut. It's a lot easier if you cut the, the angle first and then go back and, and cut it uh, at the right angle right here. If you do it the other way, sometimes the point gets in this little hole here and you're off by easily a tenth of an inch. So I cut the slope leg 
the, the sloped end first and then do the square cut here. The sloped end will not be perfectly flat to the ground and that never bothered me. But if it bothers you, chop off the angle with your hobby knife. The result will be a perfectly vertical billboard, which after final assembly may be a bit unstable on your layout. You may want to nip off one eighth of an inch to one quarter inch from the sloped leg to make it more stable. Initially, I wanted a vertical board, but more recently have gone for something more stable. Be advised. Now let's glue the two legs together. I first place a dab of glue on the mitered edge of the sloped piece and place it in the fixture. Then I place a dab of glue on the end of the vertical piece and place it into the fixture, such that the top of each piece meet at the top of the fixture. The slots in the fixture are about a hundredth of an inch wider than the styrene, so I carefully wedge my hobby knife blade between the outside edge of the legs and the fixture so that the legs have a good close fit, and I wait 15 to 20 seconds for the joint to set. I then put the point of my hobby knife under the joint and pop it out of the fixture and set it aside to cure, which takes about 2 to 24 hours. Don't rush the cure time. While waiting for the two legs to cure, cut the cross member. The length of the cross member will be a function of the height of the face frame assembly. The taller the sign, the longer the cross member. I'll spare you the trigonometry, but my fixtures require that the cross member be 1.42, 1.62, 1.43, 1.44, and 2.06 inches respectively for 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 foot high billboards. These lengths are not critical, so feel free to cut these a bit longer if you like. Using a gauge block to set the length, cut some evergreen 164 styrene about a quarter inch longer than recommended, miter a 60 degree angle, and cut it to the recommended length. Similarly, Use your gauge block to set up the cut for the diagonal cross brace, 0 0.86 inches, 1.10, 1 1.25, 1.42, and 1.62 inches. Cut oversize, cut a 60 degree angle, square off the end to the proper length. No approximations here. Now that the two legs have cured, place the cross member in the fixture making sure that the angled end is facing properly in the proper slot of the fixture. For an 8-foot face frame, use the shortest slot. For a 16-foot face frame, use the longest slot. You will notice that the cross member slots are deeper than the leg slots. This is so that after placing the cross member in the fixture, you can apply a dab of glue where the cross member intersects the legs. Then reinsert the legs into the fixture and press the pieces together, and the fixture will hold all three pieces in place. Wait. In this case, these legs, the red and the blue, are in a different plane than the black one, so that when you put it on top, you can glue it and they'll, they'll, they'll work. Wait 15 to 20 seconds for the pieces to bond, and then use a hobby knife to pry the pieces from the fixture. Wait a few hours for these pieces to cure. Before gluing the diagonal support, note that the square cut end of the diagonal brace will attach to the sloped leg and the mitered end to the vertical leg, so rotate the diagonal support until they fit. The diagonal support is in the same plane as the two legs, so don't try to glue it to the cross member. It might help to put the three-piece assembly on a piece of glass, legs on the flat surface and cross member above, then slide the glued ends of the diagonal support in place. Now, rough cut, miter, and final cut the diagonal support and glue it into place. Wait overnight for the assembly to cure. Once the new day dawns, Make sure the area where the sloped leg meets the cross member and the diagonal support is flat. If not, take a file or sandpaper and flatten it. Now it is time to attach the legs to the face frame. 
don't try to attach the legs to the frame assembly without first placing a piece of ultra high molecular weight or even wood on your tabletop so that the cross member the thing that will eventually hold the boardwalk has some place to drape while gluing the legs I like to place the legs about an inch apart take your time with them but faster setting glue like plastruct bondined might make it easier than longer setting glue do your best to keep the legs perpendicular to the frame assembly short inch wide pieces of UHMW between the legs will make this easier the legs will start to set in 15 to 60 seconds but if you can give the joint 15 minutes or so before gluing the next leg to give the joint some brief time to set up this is a real booger uh, trying to keep these legs at right angles to that uh, that face frame there uh, yeah, you really need some sort of spacers in here to, to make it work. Alternately, and while not absolutely essential, I made an assembly fixture to assist in this task, and it helped a lot. Before gluing the boardwalk, place the face frame into the large slot of the fixture, face down. Line it up so the legs are equally spaced across the long side of the face frame, and that the top of the face frame is aligned with the top of the leg assembly. Take a leg assembly and glue the top part with plastic weld. Insert the cross member into the hole between the two pieces of the fixture and press the top part of the leg into the sign and the bottom part into the long slot. Hold for 20 seconds and go on to the next leg set. Once all the legs are attached, Cut a piece of Evergreen 144 wide enough to span all the legs and glue it to the sloped legs at the intersection of all the joints to serve as a brace for all the legs. Once dry, trim off the excess. Set the assembly on its legs and glue the boardwalk to the cross member. If desired, trim the legs to make a shorter sign. A straight edge might be useful to minimize the sign's wobble. Paint the entire structure. Since glue does not adhere well to a painted surface, make sure all parts are firmly attached before painting. I prefer flat colors over glossy, and I often try to make the colors of the structure complementary to the colors in the decal. Spray paints work for me, and I always give two coats to both the front and back. Apply the decal. My experience is that about 20 seconds in the water is all it takes to loosen the decal from the backing paper. Now that I'm a little better at it, two or three seconds is probably all you need. Once dry, and if desired, spray the whole thing with dull coat. Place the sign on your layout and enjoy. Throughout the last section on making support structures, we made extensive use of assembly fixtures. But where did they come from? The short answer is, I made them. Today we don't have time to cover just how that is done, but there is another resource. I have a website at http colon slash slash daacm dot gitub dot io. And toward the bottom of the site, there is a section which contains pointers to all the videos we have seen today, plus a 16 minute section on how I made the fixtures. I have an extensive wood shop in my basement with tools like a table saw and router table with a router lift, and these tools were necessary to make the fixtures. If you don't have such large bench tools, perhaps some maker space in your area does, or maybe someone in your train club who is also into woodworking could help you in their shop. But always remember that such tools are dangerous and your safety is your responsibility. If you lack experience or training, ask for help. The material I used in the fixtures is ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene, or UHMW for short. Because it is so slippery and glue doesn't stick to my fixtures during assembly. UHMW is available from woodworking stores such as Rockler and Woodcraft and even plastic supply merchants in large cities but I prefer to buy mine from Peachtree Supply at http colon slash slash www.ptreeusa.com.
Why? Because their UHMW pieces seem to have finer grain and are easier to machine. I use 3 32nds and 1 8 inch carbide router bits to machine the material. But even smaller bits would be required if you want billboards for something smaller than HO. A digital height gauge and brass setup blocks are also almost indispensable. In a nutshell, the leg alignment fixture is a piece of 4 inch by 3 quarter inch UHMW, 4 and a quarter inches long, on which I located the center and cut a 60 degree angle. I routed 3 32nd inch slots along the two longer sides. I very carefully cut off the top point and routed slots perpendicular to the middle length side. The slots were at different locations to be used for different sized signs. The fixture for the boardwalk can be made from just about any thickness of UHMW, 1 and 3 8 by 6 inches. I routed slots 15 hundredths of an inch apart and extremely shallow using a 1 8 inch bit. The final assembly fixture is made from a piece of 5.5 inch UHMW cut lengthwise, 1 and 3 8 inch from the long side. The larger piece is thinned down from 3 quarters inch to 0 0.59 inches using a large router bit, leaving <coughs> short wings at either end. The smaller piece has 3 32nd inch slots cut in the short side and again on the long side with the long side slots being offset 3 seconds inch from the short sides. The pieces are then glued together with contact cement. There are more details to constructing the fixtures in its video. It is now September of 2021 and has been 30 months since I first created this clinic. Building billboards using styrene and ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene assembly fixtures is still a fun, low-cost way to define time and place on your layout. But not everyone has access to a shop to create the fixtures. In 2020, I purchased Creality's Ender 3 Pro 3D printer from Micro Center for about $250 and it has provided me with an alternative way to create the billboard leg sets and boardwalks that I would like to share with you. Getting from an idea to a completed 3D object requires three steps. Number one, either designing an object using computer-aided design software or downloading someone else's design from a library. Number two, converting the design into instructions for a specific model of 3D printer, a process called slicing, and number three, printing the physical object on a 3D printer. I am not going to teach you 3D design software, but I am going to show you a library of 3D designs I created for my billboards. There is a website called thingiverse.com which contains thousands of designs for 3D objects, many of them suitable for model railroading. I liked the design of my original leg sets based on a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, and I used 3D design software to create leg sets in the five heights I discussed in the original clinic, utilizing artwork from 8 to 16 feet tall in HO scale. All you need to do is visit thingiverse.com and search for D-A-A-C-K-M and you will find the completed models. Just click on an item of interest and click on the button to download the model file. A zip file will appear in your download folder, so unzip it, open the files folder, and you will find a stereolithography file, or STL file, which you can save to your hard drive. Now you are ready to go to step two, slicing. The Thingiverse doesn't zip these files anymore. You pick them out one by one. Billboard sets, well, you got the leg sets, you got the... Uh, the boardwalk and you know, that type of stuff. So it's, it's not quite like you just see, but you can figure it out.
A model file is a generic collection of triangles, and to print an object, we now need to convert the model file into movements of the specific 3D printer you are using. I use free slicer software called Cura to perform this task. I import the STL file, click on the slice button to do the conversion, and then the save button to save the resulting instructions, called G-code, to a micro SD card. The third step is the actual printing. For me, this involves placing the micro SD card in my printer, selecting the file I wish to print, and hitting a button to start the print. Your printer may work differently, so follow your manufacturer's instructions. I also have a Thingiverse model for the boardwalk, suitable for any billboard height. Just follow the process to download, slice, and print it as needed. The boardwalk is pretty wide, so just use a hobby knife to cut it to the length you need. Constructing the backer board using styrene is simple and quick, but on a 3D printer could easily take several hours to print. So I recommend cutting this part and its frame and back stiffeners using evergreen styrene. 3D printing is complicated and there is a learning curve, but it can be quite rewarding. There are many other 3D models available on Thingiverse which are applicable to model railroading. I hope you give this technique for creating billboard support structures a try. So there you have it. If you have any questions after the presentation, I can be reached at ackmans at charter.net and don't forget the website. Now let's open things up for questions. Okay, let's stop the share. Uh, Terrell, I think you were the one who asked about N-Scale. Are you a 3D printer guy yet? No, I'm not a 3D printer guy yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Haven't done that. You know, I, the people that I talk to, it's between 8 and 10% when I talk to a big club uh, that, that are into it. But uh, it's, a, it's hard, but it's very rewarding. And if I had to do signs in N scale, I'd probably try to build those structures with a 3D printer. Yeah, that's what it, I mean, trying to do that in styrene and hold it. And yeah. Everything would be, be hard. The double-sided, the doing things on tape um, really helps a lot in holding little pieces like that together. But yep. yeah, in scale, yep. in scale's fun. Uh, very true, very true. I, I've got a little end scale. I'm, I'm not a total HO bigot. Uh, but I'm going to make you guys an offer. You guys are a big you know, area where you're covering a lot of ground. And I've come to realize as I've taught this clinic that uh, not everybody's going to be able to make these fixtures. I've got a good wood shop. I can do it. Um, so I'm offering every division uh, a set of fixtures on my nickel. So uh, Byron or, or, you know, if, if Kevin wants to do it, somebody send me a, a snail mail address and I'll send you a set of those three fixtures. And, you know, Ron, you may have a rough time getting them to send them up to you. Uh, but if I were you, once I got my hands on them, I wouldn't send them back. So, <laughs> <laughs> or try the 3D stuff. But that's, uh, you know, that's an offer I will make to you if you give me a snail mail address. I'll get you one. Okay, good deal. Other questions? I think you covered it pretty good. Well, it's kind of like drinking from a fire hydrant. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of information here, but you can always go back and play it back again. You can look at the handout and hopefully uh, you'll have some fun with it. I sure do. Uh, so, so that's what I've got. Byron, I do have one request. Yes, sir. This is point number 59 for me, but only if I've got some documentation that said it took place. Sure. Will you send me an email? Sure will. Okay. Anybody else? Um, about the printing the um, decals on a laser printer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I like printing, at least for in scale, I like printing them on laser because I can use thinner uh, paper. Um, the, um, there's a company out of Australia that you can order the thinner decals from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I found is if you don't 
make the laser printer, um, what is it, honey, high, high resolution? Yep. Yeah. If you don't make it high resolution, then the ink or the toner just rubs off of it. So you by making it high resolution, then it makes it hotter when it, uh, the fuser, so when the ink actually sticks to the, the paper. That's good to know. Uh, when I also teach clinic on decal making. And uh, one thing that always comes up is uh, if I just want to print one or two decals, can I run the, the sheet through again? And on an inkjet, you can, uh, as long as it's at least half a page in size. Uh, I tried to push the envelope once and I jammed up my printer. And that's why I'm now using my second inkjet printer. Mm -hmm. You can, yeah, you, I, I really screwed that sucker up. I couldn't repair it. I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, but I couldn't fix that one. Uh, so yeah, always use at least half a page or put it on a carrier or do something. Yeah, yeah tape, it, can, tape it to another can, sheet or something. Yeah, you can waste a lot of money trying to save a couple pennies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anybody else? <coughs> well, thank you all for tonight, uh, for letting me come into your, your homes again. And I hope you found something to pick up here somewhere along the line. And if not, maybe it'll come back to, to you five years from now and, and we'll get to see each other again. You want to get me back as the host? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave, that was very informative. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, Great good, clue. Good, Great good, clue. Good, good, good. Let yeah. me, uh, there we go. And I will be checking out your website. Well, terrific. And, uh, you know, don't be a stranger. Okay. If I yeah. can help. Yeah. Okay. We appreciate it. I'll get you that email showing that you participated and instructed us. Well, thank you very much. And uh, okay. have a good night. Yeah. Anybody else got anything you want to discuss tonight? I know Kevin usually has some slides and other discussion points, but he didn't send anything to me. So, okay.